fuck yourself. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. This week is another basics episode, and I am going to be covering what I believe to be a fundamental part of terrain building, especially when you start venturing out of the dungeons and into the wilderness. And that subject is flocking. Now, if you're really new to the hobby and this word has no meaning to you, what the hell is flocking? It's pretty simple. Essentially, it is just the act of covering some surface with fine particles of a substance to create ground cover. Now, this technique is used for all sorts of things in terrain building. You know, doing stuff like dirt or sand or grass or shrubbery or whatever. It is essential, especially when you're doing outdoor stuff. In this video, I am specifically only going to be talking about flocking used for vegetation, grass, shrubbery, uh, and stuff like tree foliage. I'm not going to be touching on stuff like dirt and sand because that actually justifies its own video. Now, this isn't even going to be a video about how to apply flocking to your pieces. Because I show that in lots of my tutorials, this is going to be more dedicated to the actual material that you choose to use yourself. And more specifically, pre-made flocking versus homemade flocking. Because there is a lot of different materials that you can use to achieve the same sort of look. Some of them you can buy pre-made and some of them you can make yourself. I just want to spend some time comparing the pros and cons of each so you can decide which material is better for you, buying or making. I think it is evident on this channel, especially in the basic series, that I am a big supporter of finding the cheapest, most cost-effective way of doing things. When there's a situation where I think you're better off saving some money and just buying something cheap or making it yourself, I am absolutely going to tell you that. But there are situations where just buying a pre-made material does make more sense depending on your situation. Homemade flocking. You have a few different options of materials to use. Some of the more common materials are stuff like sawdust, floral foam, regular household sponges, uh, tea bags, or even uh, dried herbs. Some people use stuff like used coffee grounds, but I'm gonna say right now, used coffee grounds, I'm not including in this because they are a terrible idea because they can go moldy and they are a pain in the ass to work with. Just, just don't. Stick to the you know first couple I mentioned and ignore the idea of coffee grounds. I do not recommend using it. What are the pros? of making your own flocking out of stuff like sawdust or sponge. The first most obvious pro is the cost. It is typically going to cost very little for the materials or maybe it'll even be free. But keep in mind there are going to be some additional costs aside from the material itself that I will discuss in the cons. The other pro is that the material can absolutely be found locally no matter where you are. Uh, doesn't matter what country you live in, I'm sure you have access to sponges of some kind. Sawdust is usually available in most countries if you can find a source for it, unlike pre-made stuff that you may not be able to find locally. The other really big advantage to homemade flocking is that you can make batches that suit your needs. If you don't need very much, you can make a small batch, or if you need to cover large terrain boards, you can make a big batch. But since you're making it yourself, you can make as much or as little as you think you are going to need, or as much as you feel like storing for future uses. Another advantage is that if you spend a lot of time trying out different methods and materials, you may actually come upon a technique 
that gets you a material that is superior to the pre-made stuff, or if not superior, that you like the look of better or like working with better. Now, your mileage is gonna vary on this because it's gonna depend on your skill level or how much effort you put in, but there is absolutely the potential for developing a really great product to use. The last advantage of homemade stuff that I wanna touch on is durability. Now, this is not going to be true of all the materials, but it is going to be true of sawdust especially. Homemade sawdust flocking is by far more durable than some of the pre-made stuff that you can buy, which is made of foam often. The sawdust with glue in it is gonna turn very hard and is gonna be very durable, and that is a big appeal to me personally. What are the cons? Unfortunately, I think there's quite a few. The first most glaring disadvantage of making homemade flocking is the time. This is not a quick project to undertake. When you make your own flocking, you first have to source out your material. You then have to break that material down somehow, either by grading it or putting it through a food processor. It can be fairly messy. Then you have to sieve or sift and separate the different sized particles. Then you have to mix it with some kind of dye or paint or colorant, which is also messy. Then you have to take all that material and spread it out onto baking sheets or something and let it dry for a fairly long time. And you have to babysit it while you're doing it, going in and turning it and breaking it up so that it dries evenly. It takes a considerable amount of time. Your needs may be different than mine or anyone else's and time may not be an issue for you. But if time is valuable to you, the cost of the time involved may easily outweigh the cost of pre-made flocking for you. And the other disadvantage is that while you are making this, it's gonna take up a lot of space. When you have a bunch of baking sheets covered in flocking that's drying for however long it takes, that's gotta sit somewhere. If you got lots of room, it doesn't matter. If you live in a warm place, maybe you can put it outside and it's not a big deal. But if you're crafting at the dining room table and you have to clean up and pack up every day before family dinner, the space of this material drying could potentially be a big disadvantage for you. While one of the pros is that the material is gonna be readily accessible no matter where you live, uh, the con is that some of the materials might actually not be, specifically sawdust. I mean, every country is going to have sawdust that exists, but actually getting your hands on it could be a little tricky. You can't just go to your local corner store and buy a bag of sawdust. You have to actively search out a cabinetry making shop or some kind of wood processing uh, facility and ask them if they'll give you some. And it, it can be a big ordeal. It can probably be free to get it, but if you're not the kind of person that wants to knock on odd businesses' doors with weird requests for their garbage, this could be a disadvantage. And I mean, hey, I'm a professional carpenter and I don't even have really a great way to collect a lot of sawdust. I mean, I could at work set stuff up and collect it, but usually it gets mixed in with other debris I'm cutting in outside. It's depending on the material I'm cutting, like plywood, it's gonna have a lot of chemicals in it and I might not wanna use it. So personally, I don't bother with that, but a lot of people do, and you can get a big batch of sawdust for free if you wanna take the effort to find it. And the other disadvantage is actually preparing the material. Now, this isn't gonna be true of sawdust that is already broken down, you just need to sieve it, but if you're using something like floral foam or sponges, you have to actually break that foam down into little pieces. The best way to do that is with an old food processor or something like a magic bullet. You have to buy that because you're not gonna wanna use the one that you actually use in your kitchen. You don't want that cross-contamination because it's gonna be messy and that foam's gonna be in the hardware forever. So you gotta go to a thrift store, find a used one, and there is you know, a bit of more time that you have to involve and a bit more cost. Maybe you have an old one kicking around that you don't mind dedicating for this purpose. If so, that's great. But there is that 
processing time and the tool required to do so. And the last con for homemade flocking, as far as I'm concerned, is the type of work it is. Now, again, this is my personal opinion, but this hobby for me, I do it because I enjoy the process of building terrain. I really enjoy the creativity of sculpting and painting and crafting interesting worlds. The idea of whipping up a batch of homemade flocking and mixing it and dry, that to me is a chore and is not an appealing part of the hobby. I would rather spend my time applying the flocking to the stuff I build and seeing the results than mixing up a batch of my own homemade stuff. To me, that's like messy baking. I don't know, it doesn't appeal to me. It may appeal to you, but it is something to consider in general with this hobby is trying to spend as much time doing the parts of the hobby you love and as little time as possible doing the things that to you feel like a chore. Now let's talk about pre-made flocking that is ready to use after you purchase it. There are two main types of companies that produce this stuff. One being the model railroad supply companies, the other being the wargaming supply companies. And I'm gonna say right now, for most of it, you want to be looking at the model railroad companies to purchase this stuff because you are gonna get far bigger quantities for far cheaper than the stuff designed for wargaming or gaming in general. So when I'm talking about pre-made flocking, I'm specifically referring to companies like Woodland Scenics that sell big quantities for very reasonable prices and not stuff that you're gonna buy at Games Workshop for ridiculous overpriced amounts. I don't even wanna talk about that. The pros of something like Woodland Scenics. Well, the first obvious pro is that as soon as you have it, you're good to go. You just use it. The time involved to get it is the time of clicking a few buttons on your computer and then it's ordered and then Amazon ships it to you or you go to the store and you buy it and you have it. Now, if you're looking to buy it, you can buy it from Amazon and my Amazon affiliate store has links to the stuff if you're unsure of what to buy. But I also suggest if you have any uh, model railroad hobby shops in your city, checking them out. That's where I bought all of mine was from a local railway hobby store and the prices were very reasonable. I bought this at my local hobby store, railroad hobby store, and I think I paid like $12 Canadian, which is like $9 US. Now, when people talk about this stuff being expensive, I have a hard time agreeing because, you know, for Americans, $9 for this. I've had it for two years, made a ton of terrain, big boards. I've used that much. This is probably gonna last me another five, six years. It's under $10 American. It really doesn't cost that much. If you're buying all the sponges and a food processor and stuff, it's gonna add up as well. That being said, you probably wanna buy a couple different colors of these so they can add up and everybody's financial situation is different. But personally, I think this is super cost effective. Even if you're ordering it online, it's only gonna be a few dollars more, maybe less depending on your stores in your place. But the other thing I really like about it is the consistency. When you have woodland scenics, green grass, fine turf, it's going to all be the same color pretty much because it's coming out of a factory. So if I make a grass board and then two years later make some scattered terrain and I pull out my you know jug of matching flocking, it's going to match and it's going to blend. Even if I run out and I have to buy more of this, there's a very good chance that my pieces will match even if they are made years apart. With homemade flocking, unless you make a huge batch and store it forever, the stuff you make two years later may come out looking very different. You might not care about that sort of thing, but it is definitely something that some people are going to care about. So with the pre-made stuff, you have consistency. The other thing I really like about the pre-made stuff is that there is already a wide range of different colors available. You can go out and buy six or seven different colors and be set up for the rest of your hobby lifetime. 
and you will have different shades of light green, medium green, burnt grass, wh whatever you need, yellows, reds. You don't have to take the time to try to make a bunch of different shades yourself. The other thing I really like about these is that they come in these spice shaker bottles. So they're really convenient for applying. Now again, obviously, if you're making your own, you could just buy these, go to the dollar store or something, I'm sure, or Amazon, I'm sure you can get these empty, have it for your homemade stuff too, which is great. But again, then you're buying a bottle and these costs of making your own can very quickly add up to the cost of just buying it. And with these bottles, they store very neatly. You can have a whole bunch of them in a row. They all fit on your shelf or in your cabinet. They look really nice. They're neat and tidy. That's something that I like. I like uniformity. And again, back to my first point, it's time. You buy this, you know it's gonna work. You don't invest a weekend making your own set. Now, what are the cons of pre-made flocking? The cost. And again, it's gonna depend on your situation. If you can make the homemade stuff for free, don't have to buy anything at all, pre-made stuff obviously costs more. You really sometimes have to think about how much are you really saving by making something yourself? You know, don't go and spend $23 on tools and su supplies to make something that you can buy for $8. And what are my personal conclusions on the whole debate of homemade versus pre-made? Essentially, I think it depends on you and your needs and your time availability, your budget. There's a whole bunch of different things. For me personally, my time is very valuable. Pre-made flocking, I think, is very affordable. To me, personally, it's more expensive to make my own because the amount of time involved and buying the materials and buying the containers and all these things added with my time comes out to a cost far greater than just buying the $12, $9, whatever it is, jug of pre-made stuff. If you have lots of time on your hands and you find the idea of making this stuff yourself appealing because there is going to be some satisfaction out of making your own homemade stuff to use, then by all means go that route. Both are totally fine. Both will work and it really doesn't matter. So you have to decide for yourself weighing all the different pros and cons, which way you want to go. If you want to make your own flocking, I highly suggest going onto YouTube and just searching how to make flocking because there's a lot of other channels that have videos already dedicated to different techniques of making your own stuff. That's something you'll probably never see on my channel because it's not something I personally want to do. But there are other channels like the Terrain Tutor, Luke's APS, and even DM Scotty has a video of making flocking. So if you want to go that route, there's plenty of information to show you how to do it. Now, if you've decided that you just want to purchase the stuff, again, check your local railroad hobby shop if you have one. Or if you want to order some stuff online, you can go to blackmagiccraft.ca Check out my essential equipment store and there I already have links to the right stuff that you want to buy. And of course, it's my affiliate store so I get a small commission from the sale. And by you guys purchasing stuff through that store, it funds this channel and these videos. So I hope that my comparison of the pros and cons has been as unbiased as possible and you now have the information to come to your own Conclusion, if you found this video useful, hit that like button, drop me a comment below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and please, I implore you, if you really appreciate the videos that I'm making on this channel and they're really helpful for you, consider supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon because the funding from my supporters is what allows me to keep making these videos for you guys. I need your help. So check out the link. Lots of cool rewards if you do. See you again next week.